President McKay, President Brown, President Tanner, my brethren and brothers and sisters, from the depths of humility and with an overwhelming sense of inadequacy, I stand before you and pray earnestly for your prayers in my behalf. Some years ago, I stood at a pulpit and noticed a little sign that only the speaker could see. And the words on that sign were these, Who stands at this pulpit, let him be humble. How I pray to my Heavenly Father that I might never forget the lesson I learned that day. I too miss President Moyle, under whom I served in the mission field, and President Clark and President Richards, who have gone. I feel that the Lord allows them to be close to us on occasions like this. I feel to thank my Heavenly Father for his many blessings to me. I'm grateful to have been born of goodly parents whose parents were gathered out of the lands of Sweden and Scotland and England by humble missionaries who, through the bearing of their testimonies, touched the spirits of these wonderful people. I'm so grateful for my teachers and my leaders in my boyhood and young manhood in a humble pioneer ward and a pioneer stake. I'm grateful for my sweet companion and for the influence for good which she has had upon my life, and to her dear mother, who had the courage in far-off Sweden to accept the gospel and to come to this country. And I'm so happy that the Lord has blessed us with three fine children, our youngest, born to us in the mission field in Canada. I'm grateful for these blessings. I am grateful for my friends, and to Preston Robinson and my associates at the Deseret News with whom I have so closely worked these past 15 years. I know that God lives, my brothers and sisters. There is no question in my mind. I know that this is his work, and I know that the sweet experience, experience that we can feel in all this life is to feel his promptings as he directs us in the furtherance of his work. I felt these promptings as a young bishop guided to the homes where there was spiritual or perhaps temporal want. I felt it again in the mission field as I worked with your sons and your daughters, the missionaries of this great church who are a living witness and testimony to the world that this work is divine and that we are led by a prophet. I think of a little sister, a French-Canadian sister whose life was changed by the missionaries as her spirit was touched. As she said goodbye to me and my wife two years ago in Quebec, she said, President Monson, I may never see the prophet. I may never hear the prophet. But, President, far better, now that I am a member of this church, I can obey a prophet. And my sincere prayer today, President McKay, is that I might always obey you and these my brethren. I pledge my life all that I may have, I will strive to the utmost of my ability to be what you would want me to be. I am grateful for the words of Jesus Christ.
our Savior when he said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. I earnestly pray, my brothers and sisters, that my life might merit this promise from our Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen.